welcome back to another video from the Let's Play series. And I have been fairly busy around here getting a few bits and pieces done around the base. What I've done is I have brought all of that stonework down to the floor underneath where the greenhouses were, and I've made a little bit of an interior for it. Not much for now, it is just sort of neatened off while I decide what I'm going to do storage-wise. At the moment, everything is still going into exactly the same chests that it was before. I have also started putting down a little bit more of a floor down here and trying to make things connect a little bit better so that we're just, well, a little bit more interconnected. We can actually move around these places now. We can get into our greenhouses should we need to. Just inside this little storage room as well, I have created something of a board to get some ideas of what I need to do around here to get the world established. Mostly, I need an awful lot of farms. In particular, more block farms so that we can have more and different types and styles of buildings rather than just the normal stone and wood ones. But that is going to have to come a little bit later on. I have also made this little tunnel that connects underneath here. As you can see, so it goes right the way through to the back and it's just going to be another way of being able to get around our island without always having to be on the surface. And it'll add another little dimension as well, make it look like it's a bit more of a warren down here, like it's very lived in and people have been trying to find different ways to get around. And overall, I am really happy with how this is starting to look. I think it's got a nice level of detail going on. I like the bits and pieces of greenery that I'm bringing in. I'm trying not to make it look completely overgrown. Like, people do still live here, they're perhaps just not doing as well as they could be, but it's not like it's completely dilapidated. But one thing which I do want to do is I've been looking at these greenhouses, and particularly at the moment the amount that they are producing, and I'm thinking I could do with more of them. So at the moment we've just got these two greenhouses side by side, and I'm thinking about bringing in the schematic again and extending it around the corner like that. So what I'm going to end up with is four greenhouses in a row rather than just the two. So if I run up here, you can see that these will be extended right the way around, and we'll have this nice little narrow passageway here that we can use to move between the two of them. And also still the little tunnel down at the bottom to get underneath. This might be a nice way to access the storage if I brought it down here. That's just what I'm thinking at the moment, but that has left me with another issue, which is that I will confess I am royally fed up at this point with particularly getting wood and having to strip it down for these builds. Basically, it has reached the point now where we need some kind of bulk processing in this world so that it doesn't take so long to do these things. We need to be able to gather materials quickly enough that it's not going to become an absolute pain. And luckily for us though, that is exactly what the Create mod excels at. Being able to do things with the raw materials that little bit quicker than usual. So what I need to get hold of is going to be fan, let's get a fan, let's get a water wheel, and let's get some gearboxes as well. That should get us started to begin with. So what I want to be able to do is I've got an awful lot of cobble building up in my little cobble generator that I've got attached to my iron farm. I want to be able to smelt that down as quickly as possible. And luckily that is going to be really simple with just these three bits and pieces. So if I get hold of my water wheel first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dig down a little bit just so that I've got somewhere that I can place this. Let's pop him down just there, in fact, that will be just fine. Then I can take a fan and put that offset by just one block. It needs to be facing the other way. Let me just take you out, put you around the other way again. Like so, and then I can connect these two together nice and easily with a vertical gearbox. And now when I set off this water wheel, it's going to go around and it's going to make our fan do one of two things. In this case, it is pushing me along, it's blowing out in this direction. But if I take away this water, and I then put it on the other side, so that the water wheel is now turning in the opposite direction, it should be drawing in instead. There you go, so it's now sucking me sort of towards it. There we go, and that is all we need to do to start our bulk processing. So if I now take this water back out again, because I don't want it to be drawing air in, I want it to be blowing in this instance, and then if I surround just in front of this fan with some trapdoors, so I've now got a little space there that I can put, for example, a nice little bucket of lava, we will find it is now blowing through the lava and the fan is creating these super hot particles that you can see wafting out just in front there. And if I walk in front of them, they're going to kill me. Hopefully not completely. Please don't set me on fire until I die. Let's get in the water. <laughs> 
And there you can see, so it's hot enough that it's going to be able to burning players, burning mobs, and good for us, it will also cook down items as well. So if I just throw this cobble on there, so it actually goes in front of it, you'll find that it will smelt down and it will eventually become stone. There we go. Much easier than putting it through a normal smelter system with a furnace, for example. This is going to be very much faster because all of what we throw in front of it is only going to take a couple of seconds to cook down. There we go. Easy as pie. And it isn't just fire and smelting that this works with as well. If we take that lava out and we place it with water, then as you can see, the particles turn blue and now we're able to wash things like this as well. So if I go and walk in front of it, at least I don't get damaged by it this time because the water can't do anything to you. But if I do put something like gravel in there, for example, if we throw that down on the ground, it will all get washed up nicely for us and it'll turn into whatever would normally come from washing something. So in this case, it's going to become iron and flint for us. Not very much, because we didn't throw much there, but it did give us a little bit. And this just makes things that little bit easier. And so, ultimately what I want, though, is somewhere where I can just chuck things in front of somewhere like this, one with water, one with lava, and it'll be able to just bulk process some bits and pieces for me, just so that it's not taking so long to put things through smelters and such like. And the only other thing which I want right now is just somewhere that's going to strip those logs. So I'll just get these few little bits and pieces cleared away. Okay, so everything is now being cleared away. We are back to square one again, and we can now hook up something that's going to be able to strip these logs down for us. So because I know I'm going to be using belts along with shafts, I know I'm going to need to bring that power out so that it's horizontal rather than vertical. So I'm just going to use one of these little vertical gearboxes. And to that, I can attach on my first little belt. So, a couple of little shafts together and a belt between the two. I know I'm then going to need a saw, because that's what's going to be cutting down the wood. Then another little belt that's going to be able to feed into that. And there we go. That is a good enough little system to start with. I'll just get rid of these dirt blocks. These are not needed. And then I need to hook everything up. Now one thing which is a little bit of a quirk about these saws is that they must be running in the opposite direction to the item that comes onto them. Which makes sense when you think about it. The, that, those little saw blades, those little teeth on there, are going to be want to be running against the wood that's coming up to them, otherwise it won't be able to cut them down. Luckily, that sounds complicated, but it's supremely simple. It just means running little cogs along the back. Easy as pie. These two little belts are running in the same direction, and the saw is running in the opposite direction, as you can see from these little cogs. So if you take anything away from this, just know that the saw needs to go the other way. And now though, when I pop my little birch log on here, it will travel along, it's going to get stripped down for me, and then it'll come off the other side. There we go, just like that. And so now, chest, chest, and a slight funnel, and a slight funnel, boom, one perfect little automatic farm. That is going to be able to strip down logs galore for me. I don't need to stand there with an axe and do it. This has got to be one of the simplest little farms that there is, but my goodness, it is so useful and it saves so much time. And so now, though, I am quite happy to say that these three little farms will be good to get me going. I just need to make an actual building for them to live in, and I'm probably not going to make it around here, especially not if I'm going to be doing more greenhouses over there. It needs to go down in my more sort of industrialish sort of area towards this little lighthouse. And so this looks like a likely spot to me. Let's put something in there that can do our processing for us and just make this world that little bit easier to put together.
And there we have it, one little bulk station. So I have got my fire set up so that it's able to smelt down any stone or anything like that. I can put into it, I can place it into this chest up at the top. It then falls through a chute from the chest straight down in front of the fire where it gets all cooked up. The same goes for this side where I can do any washing that I need to do. I can just pop some gravel or anything there. It gets pushed towards the front and then I can just walk up to this glass and pick it up. It'll be in my inventory. Nice and easy just like that. I've also got my little saw set up, just the same as before. I can pop in any wood or anything into here and it's going to get sawn up and it'll just appear in the other one. And just to give you a demonstration, there we go, if I just pop some wood in there, it'll go through and it's going to very slowly get itself sawn up on this little saw and it will appear on the other side. Much like the other things in this world at the moment, it's not the fastest in the universe, but it does the job and it will be just fine for me for now. The whole thing runs on one little large water wheel, which is around the back, which unfortunately does run in the wrong direction. I might have to muck about with that a little bit. At the moment, this is the way it needs to go. I'd like it to go the other way, but it's not really that much of a problem. It does have this portal in front of it at the moment, which of course I can't remove yet because I don't have any diamond tools. It's just going to have to stay there until I can get that one cleared up. Although, in all honesty, I do also kind of like it. I think it sort of adds to the aesthetic of this world being rather run down. There was something here before and now it's gotten all bashed up, so maybe I'll leave it there actually. Either way though, I do now have the means to bulk process goods so I can get stone cooked up, I can get anything washed down, and I can chop some logs if I want to. And that just means things are going to be a little bit easier going forwards, and for example, I can now gather up all the stuff I need to be able to go and make my new greenhouses on the other side. And in fact, you know what? Let's do it. Let's make these other greenhouses as well. At the moment, I am not 100% convinced on them. I think this might be rather over greenhousing the world, but I'll never know until I actually put them in there. And if I don't like it, I can always just take them back down again. So for now, though, let's just get them built and see how it looks afterwards. And there you have it though, I have built in the next batch of greenhouses. So we've now got this really kind of modular effect going on with them being mirrored against each other. So you've got four big greenhouses rather than just the two. And I do really like this narrow little passageway that it creates just here. I was thinking this is probably a sort of passageway where people were never really supposed to be using it, but they've taken away this fence and there's going to be like a sneaky little passage down here that's all overgrown along the sides, just to make it look like this is something where perhaps people are doing a little bit of trespassing when they go through there. And the view from up here on the opposing hill where our cherry trees are, we can see that there's our greenhouses over there. They are making quite an imposing looking wall going around this little island. But I'm going to put some little houses down at the bottom here just to kind of soften them as they go into the water. And we'll have a little bit of a jetty and a dock down there as well, just so that it's not quite so obvious that they've been repeated. Overall, though, I am very happy with how this little island is coming along. All I really want to do next, though, is make sure that we get a new block in there just so that it doesn't become too repetitive. And that is probably going to be some nice mud bricks just because it'll fit in neatly with the aesthetic that we've got. Plus the mud itself makes a nice sort of dark, grungy sort of material for putting around the base. But I think that's where I'm going to call this one an episode. We've got a nice little bit of bulk processing that we can now do, and we've also doubled our output for our crops and things like that. And next episode, I think we're going to need to do a little bit of work on our tools and that sort of bits and pieces, just because iron isn't really cutting it anymore. I think it's about time we got some diamond and maybe got a bit of enchanting going as well. But I hope you've enjoyed this little episode. Happy Minecrafting, everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.